Elmo's World Plug and Play, released in 2005. That's right, I'm reviewing another Elmo game. That's two in a row. Because, you know, I'm just crazy like that. You know, I live on the edge sometimes. This was a joystick that had a built-in game that plugged directly into your TV. No game console required. And I have never seen a plug and play aimed at such a young age group. It just has two directions to move and one gigantic button. You know, just to make sure you don't miss while pressing it, I guess. This is a collection of five games with a pretty nice NES retro look to it. This first game's called Dinner for Dorothy, which I think is almost fish, his pet goldfish. You move left and right and catch food pellets. <laughs> the idea of a fish feeding simulator almost seems like a joke game. But no, here it is. Uh, someone thought it was a legit idea. Huh. But uh, not a very fun game. I can't even see a kid liking this too much, regardless of their age. Next up is Elmo Sea Search, and this one's about learning letters. Elmo will move left and right, catching letters in the order of their alphabetical appearance. If Elmo runs into an empty bubble, he loses one of his lives. This game is a little slow, and it almost seems to be a reverse of the uh, fish feeding game. But the extra bit of learning does make it a little better than that one. And I know here Elmo's wearing diving gear, but it looks like he's wearing mascara around his eyes and he has a ball gag in his mouth. But hey, whatever you're into, Elmo, it's, uh, it's all good, little buddy. Elmo Super Soccer has Elmo as a goaltender. The ball goes left, forward, or right. You try to block the ball from going in the net by using the joystick and moving in front of the ball. The ball goes fairly slow, so it's not much of a reflex game. And it's pretty generic, I've seen this done before. It's uh, definitely the least interesting game on the collection. Elmo's Shape Jump teaches you about recognizing shapes. You wait for the shape that matches the start and end shape in the green sections to appear in front of you, and then you leap with all your might. Jumping on the wrong shape will move you back and take one of your lives away. This one does have a little bit of learning to it and slightly better animations than the previous games. So I'll give this one a bit of a nod, but it's still nothing really special. I wonder though if the uh, green represents grass and the blue is like a lake or something? I don't know, maybe I'm just kind of looking too deep into this, I, I don't know. And finally, Elmo Shape Match. This one has an object with various shapes, and you have to fill it in with a matching shape from the bottom of the screen. You can make mistakes up to three times, and there's about ten levels to this to play. When you complete the shape, it turns into a picture of whatever it was. Now this little bit of picture reward for completing the shape does encourage you to keep going. I myself was even kind of wondering to see what the picture would look like when I was done. Oh my god, it's Big Bear. <laughs> oh, who's this one? That's gotta be Kermit the Frog. It's gotta be. Oh, please. Please be Kermit the Frog, please. Oh, it's you. So overall, Plug and Play Elmo's World is not a particularly great game. It does appear this is aiming at an extremely young age group, probably under five, so it's definitely not meant to be difficult. But this just doesn't have a lot of a uh, razzle-dazzle, I guess you could say. There's barely any sound effects, very flat and plain graphics, and little variation of anything. You know, they could have changed the background after a level or two. You gotta keep a kid interested. I found Elmo's Shape Match to be the best game on here. That's because of the visual change, there was something new to look at. But the other games had visually nothing changing, so I can see a kid losing interest fast in this. Looking at the same thing over and over again just really isn't fun to a kid. Still, I've never seen a plug and play aiming at such a young audience, so this actually was kind of a nifty thing to look at, I'll give it that. It does make me wonder though if there is a few more of these uh, Sesame Street plug and play games out there. I suppose I'll just have to look around and find out. Thanks for watching. Yeah.